William, I have something for you. What? An invitation to the Inviting Vines Tour. Ooh, thank you so much. You're welcome. And we have an invitation for you, a new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time and welcome to Memorial Day weekend. You know, we are standing in one of the beautiful gardens of the Inviting Vines Tour. Later on in the show, we're going to be taking you to two of those gardens. And you know, part of the tour is at Lusher Farm at the Rogerson Clematis Garden, and we heard there's over 200 varieties in bloom. And also, coming up in the show, we'll be introducing you to the Rose Festival Rose. We are also going to be showing you some new introduction of plants which are available this year. But first, shade trees. I am at Blooming Junction today with Ron, and Ron, you know, summer's coming. It's going to be a warm one. That's and so right. maybe we're looking for some trees that cast shade. I think a shade tree would be so nice for most people to have on their property. Yeah, um, a lot of people are starting to look into that now, especially after we had that weekend of yeah, really high temperatures. Warm, yeah. <laughs> it kind of makes them think, oh, I need to cool my, my house down a little bit. Um, and a shade tree does that. Um, it provides cooling effect for your home. Um, it also provides a, a shady area in your yard if you have full sun, which you know opens it up to a whole another world of plant material that you can plant. That is nice. And so if we're going to site it, say, to cool the house, is there a special direction I want to put it in conjunction with the house? Yeah, usually it's on the, the southwest side of the home where you get that afternoon sun, the hottest sun of the day. Mm. And so we'd want a deciduous tree there. We wouldn't want a conifer. That's right. You know, I have a lot of people that come in and they want uh, a tree um, for a cooling effect on their home. Um, and they may be talking about something evergreen. And I, I point out that um, the sun that you're blocking in the summertime is that same sun in the wintertime. <laughs> right. Um, and you want that sun coming in the wintertime. It's, it's gray enough without uh, right, losing right. any sun. So you're going to put that conifer some other place. That's right. Uh, so you have some beautiful samples here. So what are these? Well, this is one of my very favorites. Oh, this is a beautiful. Raywood ash. Um, this is a medium to large tree, about 40, 40 to 50 feet tall, um, which is a medium. Uh, sure shade tree. Um, I love it because it's got a, a, a very fine leaf. It provides a dappled shade um, and then the, the fall color is just brilliant. Nice. It's a purplish red color. That is beautiful. And, and that's that's a great thing about the deciduous trees too is for the most part they go through fall color. Right and you should be looking for that. Yeah, Instead absolutely. of just one kind of view you have all different things that are going on with those trees all right. year long. They're generally two or three season trees. Nice, nice. And these on your right side are beautiful too. These are uh, Nissa selvaticas. This one's wildfire here. Um, this is you know a, a moderate sized tree um, but you can't beat these for fall color. Beautiful. Just intense uh, ruby red fall color. It's Whoa. just incredible. Nice. And kind of medium size too? Yes. Beautiful. So we're going to walk down this line here because you have all kinds of trees. So what else do we want to consider when we're looking for trees for our for our yard, for our property? Well, there's certain things, you know, um, certain trees do better in a lawn situation than other trees. Um, uh, you want to make sure that when you're siding your tree, um, and, and planting that tree that you are paying particular attention to the tree. There's a lot of people that come in, they want a, a tree for their lawn and, and they think that they can just water with the irrigation that they watered their lawn. Oh, sure. You really need to sp pay special attention the first few years. Make sure those roots go down um, so you don't have problems in the future. Right, right. And so because we get so hot in the summertime and then there's the hot wind, so you really need to make sure that it's really paid attention to. That's right. Stake it. Um, keep it staked for about two years and then remove those stakes so it develops a strong structure. Mm -hmm. So what other uh, varieties do you have here you want to talk about? Um, this is one of our larger ones. This is a yellow wood here. It's pretty. Um, this is a very nice tree too. It goes through... Um, some yellow fall color, not quite as brilliant, but it's a great uh, large tree um, if you're looking for something big, fast growing. And Ron, what about trees that maybe don't need staking? Do you have anything that would be maybe a smaller tree? We sure do. You want to take a look at some? Sure, let's go. 
Now around this area, it seems like there's a lot of flowering trees. So this one looks like there's a rose on it. Yeah, this is a beauty. This is a new one for me. This is a Brandywine crab apple. Wow. And it's just got a great little rose, um, almost like a Cecil Brunner or something. Very nice. Um, a lot of the flowering uh, trees, the flowering pears, um, cherries, plums, they all make great small um, shade trees. Right. I even see like a Styrax here that's really pretty, kind of a weeping shade. Yeah. So even for a smaller space. Right. This is a weeping and we do have the uprights and they, they do um, add additional shade to your garden. And really here at Blooming Junction, you have trees that can go in any um, application for a garden, a property that would really enhance it so much. Yeah, that's right. So really, if you're looking for shade trees, any kind of tree for your property or garden, come out to Blooming Junction, talk to Ron and his staff, and it really makes it so easy to get the one that looks best for you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Judy. Since 1982, the wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Since 1926, Bonide has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonide has the answer. Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew controls most common garden insects and is derived from a naturally occurring bacteria to help with your organic gardening. It's safe to use even on fruits and vegetables. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. Build a beautiful home inside and out at French Prairie Perennials. Inside, we have just the right creative elements to complete your decor. We offer an oasis of unusual, nature-inspired garden and home gifts and accessories. Outside, choose from our wide selection of unique dwarf conifers and sparkling companion plants. French Prairie Perennials, located between Woodburn and Wilsonville. Take exit 278 to Aurora and French Prairie Perennials. Well, I am at Vanessa Nursery with Ken, and Ken asked me to play a card game with him. And so we have all these cards of West Country Lupin. So I picked one, and so I'm going to pick this one. Manhattan Lights. Whoa. Manhattan Lights is a bicolor. It's phenomenal. We have one right here along with these other West Country Lupins that we have. Um, this is about 27 inches long, and the flowers look exactly like they do in the pictures. They sure do. And look one at thing, all of them. this series, very durable Lupin. Sometimes they're a little bit tender and soft. These are great, rugged. They love the Pacific Northwest. They like the cool nights with the warm days that we have. And our acidic soles are just perfect for this, this series. And you can see we've got, we've got, uh, to, we got this. To Red rum. Rum, rum. This one, we got the yellows. It's Amazing. A, it's a great series. Uh, we're excited to have them. They've been on the market for about two years mm -hmm. now. Perfect. And we can't wait for them to uh, start showing up here in Oregon. Yeah. And you have some other things that you want to tell us about. So let's go over here. Sure. They always have such a nice selection for us, and so what else do you have for us today? First, I want to show you the uh, lavender. This lavender here, Okay. this is Wee One Lavender, and it, typically lavender is like two foot, three oh, sure, foot full of flowers. Big. This stays eight to ten inches, wow. somewhere around there, maybe twelve inches, and comparatively, like over here to uh, Phenomenal, Big time. Uh, mm -hmm. much tighter, works well in a smaller garden, still gives you the, the bombs of flowers. Right, it's uh, already budding up and it's so tiny. Yeah, it takes our soil as well, it does really good here in Oregon. Nice, uh, nice. It comes out of a program in uh, Colorado, but we've brought it here to Oregon as well. Very nice, and look at this one, look at those flowers. Yeah, this is a black elderberry, this is called Black Tower, 
and most elderberries that you see, black elderberries, they get they get fairly sizable, they're but they're beautiful in the Northwest. Right. They, I think they like the Northwest better than the Midwest where they were bred for. Uh -huh. This one is special because it stays narrow and tight as you can see, still loads up with flowers, gives you the dark foliage like you would expect from a, a black leaf elderberry, but works well in containers, works well in the Wonderful. landscape, works well in the patio, wherever you decide to put it. And that's Black Tower? This is Sambucus Black Tower. Wonderful, wonderful. And then, um, should we talk about this one here? Yeah, this is a unique little plant. This is uh, a manzanita type. This is called Panchito. The thing about Panchito, it's an evergreen plant that likes dry shade Whoa. and tolerates the heat well. Probably gets around 18 inches to two feet where typically manzanitas can they get really big, over roam sure. things. And the beautiful thing about this is if you are lucky enough to also have a summer house or a winter <laughs> house in the east side, sure. this goes really well over in Madras, Prineville, Bend, Sun River, all those spots. It's a great popular plant. Again, part of the plant select program. Very nice. And then a viburnum that's a little bit smaller than its parent. Yeah, this viburnum is a viburnum mini man. And it was selected uh, in the mountains uh, in the, in the uh, Intermount regions of Colorado, Montana. Its parent plant was 12 feet. This gets about five to six feet. Stays real tidy, gets creamy flowers on it in the spring. Beautiful, durable, rugged, works well here in the Northwest. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And I see a new a, a Ilex, a new kind of holly, but it's a little softer. It is. It's called Mademoiselle. Um, the thing we like about it is it's brand new growth, gets this real chocolatey color mm. to it and it's soft it's soft to the touch you know a lot of holies you touch them in there oh, yeah. this one's beautiful in, in that respect and 12 feet 10 12 feet tall six eight feet wide it's fairly well behaved for a holly it's a nice background plant but beautiful beautiful mm -hmm. texture and color good berries and nice color in the fall perfect and then a new laurel yeah this laurel it's been out for probably five or six years okay. often is shipped to the east coast but we like it here as a replacement for Autolucan laurel. Mm -hmm. A couple things about it, stays a little bit tighter than Autolucans. It doesn't get that shot hole, those, mm. that fungus that you see on sure. Autolucans all the time. Grows well in a container and uh, stays a little more compact. So that's one of the beautiful things we like about it. You know, everybody's looking for some kind of a foundation plant or maybe um, even a screening. So that would be a nice one for that. It works really well. Well, you know, where can we find all these plants from, for, from Van Essen? Because you're growers, you're not retailers. So yeah, where can we go? On our website at vanessennursery.com, we will have a list of all of our retail growers in the Pacific Northwest that carry or have access to our plant material. Uh, so you just have to call your local favorite garden center and see if they have the Van Essen plants or go to the website and then you can connect that way. Well, thanks so much. You always show us the greatest you're welcome. plants. You're welcome. Cool, huh? Thanks. So our tip of the week this week is all about how you can mark your tools so you know measurements. A lot of plants say, you know, plant within six inches or plant within a foot of each other. To do that easily, you just take a permanent marker and you mark on the tool itself. So we have a six inch, a foot, one and a half, two feet. Then all you have to do when you plant, is go down there, put it down, and dig your holes right where they belong. So making tools your helper by making them markers, that's our tip of the week. Locally grown, fresh from the farm, stylish and sustainable, your dream yard starts at Owl's Garden and Home. This Memorial Day weekend, create an inviting gathering place for family and friends. All of our patio furniture is on sale now, waiting to transform your yard or deck into an outdoor retreat. Then add impact with colorful pottery, hundreds of unique designs and sizes, all also on sale now. Owl's Garden and Home in Woodburn, Sherwood, Gresham, and Wilsonville. When you plant your flower baskets and containers this year, consider Black Gold All-Purpose Potting Mix for the best results. This worm castings enriched, well-drained potting soil has a controlled release fertilizer to feed your plants up to six months. Black Gold All-Purpose Potting Mix now contains resilience for enhanced plant growth. Available at garden centers everywhere. For more information, visit blackgold.bz. All the riches of the earth. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. 
Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terracasa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terracasa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terracasa. Terracasa in downtown Damascus. Subaru Garden Days returns to Capital Subaru in Salem. Join us for a day of food, fun, and garden excitement. Select garden vendors join William and Judy on the parkway from 11 to 3. That's Subaru Garden Days, June 8th at Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. Well, I am absolutely thrilled to be here at the Mushroomery in Lebanon, and I'm here with Jen. And Jen, there was so much information I want to get out of you, but we have mm -hmm. such limited time, so I'm going to jump right in to what is behind us is actually a vegetable garden where you grow mushrooms, right? Mm -hmm. It is. We grow vegetables and mushrooms together right here. And that just freaks me out a little, because how, how do you do that? I would have never <laughs> put those two together, and yet here they are. Yeah, so we made our rows and we planted our seeds in these rows. And in the walkways, we ended up putting myceliated sawdust in there. Okay, which well, that is, word alone scares me. What is myceliated <laughs> sawdust? It means sawdust that we have inoculated with mushroom mycelium. That means basically planted mushroom mycelium into that. And mycelium is essentially the roots of mushrooms. And then you make what are kind of leftover logs of those things and that's what has already grown the mushrooms so you break them up and put them here we Is do that... and um it's uh it's for multi-purposes really we use it as um a mulch so weeds won't grow through and we don't have to weed as much it adds nitrogen um, and we also get mushrooms out of it and then tell me about like i see some seedlings starting here mm -hmm. but what is the connection between mushroom growth and harvesting and the vegetables you grow? Is there a connection there at all? Well, um, the my, some of the mycelium that we plant is considered a companion planter. Things like white elm, the garden giant, um, they actually create a beneficial relationship with the plants in the garden. Oh, wow. And I feel like when we were talking, you, you said uh, white giant, was that the name? Garden of? giant. Garden giant. That one that you have and you tell people how to grow is actually a perennial mushroom, right? It is. Right? Wow. It's a perennial mushroom. It's easy to establish in your garden. It comes back every year. And um, one of the neatest things about it is that the end of its mycelial thread, its kind of root, it grows a spike which stabs and consumes <laughs> pesky nematodes wow. in your garden. Oh my goodness. Well, and, and quickly, we're gonna to go to another place here in a, in a minute, but how many varieties do you grow, but you also sell them at markets, how many do you sell? We grow about seven different varieties at the farm, and we sell spawn that you can use to make outdoor mushroom beds with at least five of those varieties. Wow, wonderful. Well, let's take a minute and walk over to another location and talk to a different guy that's here, okay? Okay. Come on over. Okay, Jen, well, clearly we're inside now, but tell me what is this part of the business and why are we in here? So this is one of our six grow rooms. Wow. Um, it's 100% climate controlled for temperature, humidity, um, fresh air, and light. And standing here now, I am seeing mushrooms growing, but I have to say, it's, it's like from a cartoon almost. The colors are exquisite here. Yeah, this is our subtropical grow room and we have some pink oyster growing. There's some golden oyster. They're absolutely beautiful. They are beautiful. <laughs> so, you know, um, I find it so fascinating that we came here and met you and got to understand this. So where can people, our viewers, find out more? Where, where can you be reached at? Um, you can actually talk to us in person, either at our farm, we have a farm stand, or at one of the farmers markets we attend on Saturday, which is the Eugene Corvallis and Beaverton Farmers Market. We're also at the Portland People's Co-op Farmers Market on Wednesday in Portland. And is there a place you have all that listed somewhere? On our website at themushroomery.net 
and also um, on our Facebook page. Wonderful. So if you are as fascinated and excited as I am about this story and growing mm -hmm. your own mushrooms and to figure out how you can either grow them outside or you can even buy them fresh and eat them during that time period, you can go to gardentype.tv. We'll click you over to their website. Thank you so much, Jen. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Well, this is the time for the Rose Festival in Portland, and I am at Portland Nursery, who is doing such a great thing for that. And Sarah, what's going on with Portland Nursery and the festival? Yeah, so we uh, have the exclusive Rose Festival Parade Rose oh, wow. right here, and um, $2 of every purchased rose goes towards the Rose Festival Foundation. What's the name of the rose this year? It's called Sun Showers, okay. and it's a really pretty apricot with a nice little pink uh, finish. And nice. I'm not sure if this is new, but it says that it, the sun doesn't fade the color, so that it's that nice, nice strong color the whole time. Um, it's a floribunda, so you've got those little uh, clusters of roses, which I have some of those at my house, and I love cutting them and bringing them inside for, you know, around the house, which I think I like roses to be cut roses, but um, anyway, oh, it's, it's so a great nice. rose. That's a nice idea because you enjoy them in the garden and then you enjoy them in your home. That's yes. wonderful. Yeah, so this is the only place that you can get it. And we also have just thousands of roses <laughs> to pick from if that's not the, what you're thinking. Uh, but it's really nice to support the Rose Festival. And then you have other ones, so maybe put a couple in. Just don't put one rose in. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, when you're planting roses, you want to plant it similar to a tree. You want to make sure you dig a big hole. Um, make sure the soil is nice and amended with some compost or we have a special rose mix that we carry oh. um, and a transplant fertilizer and then making sure you water it in really good and, and get it nice and moist and yeah, roses do great in this part of the country. So. They do. And then down the summer, should we add another fertilizer application into the summer then? Definitely doing something with a bloom um, fertilizer would help get those roses going and a repeat bloom if they're a repeat bloomer. Perfect. So, and yeah, I think this one great. is too. Yeah, heavy f roses are heavy feeders, so definitely fertilizing is a good choice. Ah, it is. And I think they picked a really pretty one this year. And so really, if you want to add one to your garden collection, come out to Portland Nursery on Stark Street or Division because they're the only garden center that are going to have this particular rose. Thanks so much. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. What's even better than buying a brand new Subaru? How about getting the best possible value from a place that's as trustworthy and dependable as a Subaru? At Capital Subaru, your satisfaction is our goal, which is why you can always expect the kind of service and selection that keeps you smiling. From our lot to your driveway. Get the most out of spring in the versatile, adventure-ready new 2019 Subaru Crosstrek 2.0i Premium. Lease it now, just $198 per month. Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Peonies, bold and beautiful, an old favorite, but ever new, and perfect for your garden. At Adelman Peonies, you'll find hundreds of different peonies, bush, ito, and tree peonies covering 20 acres. Come stroll the display garden, then find a special plant or bouquet to take home. Join us any day of the week for beautiful color or weekends for special events. Adelman Peonies is just east of I-5 at exit 263 on Brook Lake Road or online at peonyparadise.com. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. For over 100 years, Collier Arborcare and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. At Sagawa Nursery, we talk about going beyond the ordinary. Whether it's new and exciting varieties of plants and shrubs, to a wide selection of unique Japanese maples, or our great collection of tools, garden products, and Asian-themed gifts, we can help transform your garden into something extraordinary. Come in and let us make your garden a showcase. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary.
Well, it is quite a delight for me to be standing in one of the four beautiful gardens that is going to be on the Inviting Vines tour today. And I'm here with Dale. And Dale, you are the proud owner of this stunning garden, right? Yes, I am. So tell me, did you design this? Because it's beautiful. Heavens no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you had someone help. <laughs> yes. But then, you know, you get to still live here and be a part of this garden. So what, what made you think, ah, Clematis, I want to get those involved in this garden. Well, that's entirely Phyllis's fault. Is it? <laughs> yes, yeah. Phyllis got me involved in the Rogers and Clematis garden about six years ago, convinced me that I needed to become a gardener. Right. I've always been a putterer. Right. <laughs> and um, and uh, the rest is history, really. Because it really has, you know, in, in talking with you before we did this segment, it really has opened you up to a part of gardening that you really are not a putterer much anymore. You really love what you do out here. Yeah, I do. I really do like it. And then I, I was wondering, when, when you get this, this tour today, um, how does that make you feel to know all these people are coming just to see this garden? Well, a little jittery, actually. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it is beautiful. And, and I've been told for years by Lucy and Phyllis that I need to share the garden with others. Right, um, right. Some suggested I should have weddings here. Yeah. I said, I don't think so. So how many, how many clematis do you actually have in this garden? I have 20. Wow, wow. Yeah. And I bet you know almost every single name of them, don't you? Almost. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm also here with Phyllis. Now, Phyllis, tell me, tell me how it is that you're involved in the Inviting Vines tour. Well, I'm on the board of the Friends of Rogerson Clematis Collection, and we house the collection. It's the only accredited Clematis collection in North America, right, right. and we house it at Lusher Farm, nice. which is in the city of Lake Oswego Park. And um, it's open to the public, dawn to dusk, and this is our major fundraiser for our event, for us. So, uh, as a major fundraiser, what is it? What does it do? What does that fundraising do to benefit? The well, it pays for everything from our, our curatorial services that we have, our curator, Linda Butler. It pays for everything from hardscape, gravel, mulch. So upkeep plants, really is upkeep, a lot all of All the it. upkeep of the garden is paid for through this fundraiser and our plant sales and a number of other means. So then we've got, um, we've got this garden today, but we've also got three other gardens that are on this tour on Saturday, right? That's correct, and they all could not be more different. Right. So you have, this is a suburban garden. We have a country garden, that's three acres. We have a home on the lake, and we have a small garden back in first edition again. And so we're going to go to another garden soon. Which, which one is that one that it's we're going to be It's Sue Cassidy, and it's out in the country. It's a three-acre garden. Wonderful, wonderful. So uh, there you have it. Now we're going to take a minute and go to this other beautiful garden. So I'm out in the beautiful country of Wilsonville and I'm at another wonderful garden. It's the country garden that we'll be visiting on the, uh, on the tour today. And I have to say I'm here with Susan. And Susan, uh, and I ask this question only because I'm intrigued at how people get such beautiful gardens. Mm -hmm. Are you the one that came up with the idea of creating this? Mm, well, I wanted to create this. Right. <laughs> but the <laughs> skill set, didn't, you, yeah, you didn't feel no, you had that. No, so Lucy Hardiman, a friend of mine recommended her, and I didn't know anything about her. She came here, and she saw the house, and um, she basically said, gosh, your house is so geometric. I want to give you lady curves. Oh, and that so, sounds like Lucy. <laughs> yeah, so she gave me lady curves with exclamation points all over the yard. So when you come, you'll see lots of curves and lots of, vertical um, and the, the point of all of this though is you are really happy with it you love this garden I just I love it and I you have it. even started putting yeah, uh, granted there's you have five clematis in here right now mm -hmm, currently mm -hmm. but that's you plan on doing more right <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna put it all over the yard <laughs> <laughs> well there you go so thank you so much yeah, Susan uh, all right. so okay Phyllis now here we are again and I have to say, tell me about, because these two gardens alone have been so exquisite and uniquely different, so tell me about the other couple involved. Okay, we have one garden that's on the lake in Lake Oswego. Um, it's on about a third of an acre and it's a deep ravine and the owner has beautiful and magnificent art pieces, but also has naturalized the entire area. Nice. So you have a view of the lake, plus you have a really natural, beautiful setting. And then the fourth garden is small, intimate for a really active family in the first edition area of Lake Oswego where we had three gardens last year. Wonderful. Now, um, this, this is happening today, so tell me, 
can people still join? How do they buy the tip? All of that behind the scenes stuff that's right. so important. All right. Well, we had a breakfast this morning with a speaker, Morris Horn. Um, we still have tickets left for this afternoon's tea with you and Judy right, as our right. special hosts and guests. Um, and we have tickets available for that. And we have, and that can be purchased at the farm or you can purchase at any of the four gardens that are open. Um, and uh, anytime you want to come to Losher Farm today at the garden, uh, general tour tickets are open and, and tea tickets are available. So really there's not a cutoff time. There's, if you get there and you want to buy a ticket, you That's can right. buy it and go right. on the tour. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, you know, I tell you that Judy and I have been on this tour more than once already and we have had such an exquisite time every single time. The gardens are all lovely and the people that actually are the owners or the ones we met are lovely as well. So if you haven't signed up yet, you still can. Just be sure to go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to their website. Come to any of the gardens, get your ticket, and enjoy the beautiful gardens on this tour. Thank you so much, lady. Thank you. Thanks. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. The Rose Festival is a tradition for families in Oregon, just like Portland Nursery. For over a hundred years, the Rose Festival and Portland Nursery have brought beauty to our city and our gardens. Whether you're looking for something new or an old favorite, we have all the right plants to make your backyard your favorite destination. We even have the official Rose Festival rose available at our stores. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. At 50th and Stark and 90th and Division. The irises are blooming. The Shriners Iris Display Garden is now open to the public. Surround yourself with a rainbow of color of over 500 irises or take a stroll in our 10-acre display garden. Smell the fragrance as you see iris paired with other beautiful blooming plants. Check out our cut flower display and pick up something for that iris lover in our gift shop. Take home a cut flower bouquet or order some for your own garden. We're easy to find. Take the Brooks exit off I-5 and follow the signs. Nothing is more inviting than a garden full of beautiful clematis, and your chance to see the Queen of Vines is during the Inviting Vines Garden Tour on Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. Tour four private gardens in the Lake Oswego West Lynn area, then end your day at the Rogerson Clematis Collection at Lusher Farm. This year we're also offering two special ticketed breakfast and tea events. To find out more and where you can get your tickets, go to rogersonclematiscollection.org. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. As all of us gardeners have beautiful flowers in our garden, don't we always want to bring them in? And maybe you need a vase. Well, I have a person for you. I'm with Rosalind Cooper, who's from Vibrant Sky Glassworks. And these are just fantastic. And I think every gardener needs a wonderful vase. But you know, we are uh, maybe not as talented as you. So <laughs> how did you get started in glass? Um, when I was 17, I went to Notre Dame and I saw the beautiful glasswork there. And that's what I really wanted to um, concentrate on. I, once my kids were old enough, um, I Did started in making glass? vase. I started in doing stained glass Whoa. in 1990, and I've been doing fused glass since 2004. And do you still do stained glass? No, I don't. Ah, so you just concentrate. <laughs> no, no. This. Once I started in doing fused glass, that was about it. And and um, I really enjoy doing fused glass. There's so many challenges, so many different ways of doing it, so many different methods. It's interesting because, you know, we have all seen blown glass, but then how is this technique different from blown glass? Um, it's called warm glass in that it's done in a kiln mm -hmm. and it goes up to, um, I've done things up to 1600 degrees. Usually wow. I do it um, at 1480 full fuse, making it flat. Um, for these, I do a flat sheet using different techniques, different methods. Um, 
And you put and different layers of colors too? I do, yes. Um, sometimes I use clear glass and just put the colors on that. Sometimes I use different colors. This one I did like a lace method. Beautiful. Use the black first. This one I used um, clear glass and used frit. This one I did a crackle technique. This one I did drop dot with different colors. And then, but it's really hot. So then how do you get at all these kind of cool textures and shapes? Luck. Oh, okay. <laughs> maybe a no, secret. No. Secrets, yes. <laughs> and so you do vases and then do you do other kinds of pieces too? I do, I do flat panels, I do coasters, I do jewelry. The ones that it looks like a scene and I could just see it in a window with the sun coming through just to kind of ignite all those colors are just fantastic. Yes. And so I, you have this wonderful studio here and it's, it's just really neat to see because you think, oh, you need like a special studio, but this is really just your garage that's turned into a studio. It is, and we will never put a car in here again. <laughs> you know, the husband made it so that it would be on a piano hinge and it could go up and the whole bit. Oh. But the car has never gone in. Uh, but it fits you in all your what you need. Yes. And then yes. where can we see you? Because you're in our, your home here, but where can we see you in all your pieces? Um, well, you can see me on Vibrant Sky Glassworks, my Facebook page. Okay. And also this weekend I'll be at Crafts on the Coast in Yahats, Memorial Day weekend. Oh, that and is so cool. Because it would really be nice to take a trip to the coast and go to a crafts fair, an art yes. fair, and then see all these wonderful pieces. It is, yes. Uh, it's fun. Well, this is just wonderful, and it's just the time of year that you would need a vase to go into your home. So go to Garden Time, and we'll click you over to Rosalind's Facebook page and get all the information about where to find her this weekend. Thanks so much. They're just Thank beautiful. You. Thank you. Well, I'm standing here with Tom from Bon Eyed and we are at Terra Gardens. And Tom, you know, there's a couple of things that always tend to haunt us gardeners. Things like blackberry vines that are just rampant sometimes. And then the uh, horsetail mm -hmm. stuff. You have a product that takes care of those. I sure do. And it, in the, it is label specific for blackberries uh, and horsetail. Nice. Uh, horsetail can be a little scary. It, it, uh, at first sight, it's almost prehistoric. Right. It's uh, quite, quite the invasive and ugly weed. Uh, but uh, before I tell you how this works, the magic ingredient is something called triclopyr. Uh, so anytime you're going after blackberries, make sure it contains some percentage of triclopyr uh, and for horsetail. So um, this will make it very easy because there's no mixing, there's no spraying. You simply unscrew the cap and beneath the cap is a brush. Oh wow. And you, so from there you just brush it onto the blackberry cane or the actively growing horsetail. So you're not, I like this too, because then if you're spraying, there's chances that sprays can be caught in the wind too and go elsewhere. Yeah. This just diminishes all that. It diminishes it completely. There's no drift because we're not spraying. So you can just um, pinpoint exactly where you're going. I will say the most actively growing weed, the most actively growing blackberry, horsetail, even thistle, that's what you want to get this on. So as soon as you see it, the sooner you see it starting is when that's the best Absolutely, time to get it on there. Yeah. Wonderful. And usually one application, and it's a nice even brush stroke uh, with that dauber cap, um, get it completely covered both sides, um, and usually one application, it'll translocate down to the roots and kill it completely. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, there you have it. You know, we always want to make gardening easier for all of us. So for more information on this product, go to Gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website, or you can just come out here if you're in the Salem area to Terra Gardens and pick it up there. Thanks a lot, Tom. Thank you. Nestled in the oaks of the Willamette Valley is a nursery that is truly exceptional. At Out in the Garden Nursery, you will find a vast array of shade plants, ornamental grasses, and hardy perennials. Let us help you bring color and texture into your garden. We offer over 100 types of perennials. Many of our plants are evergreen for year-round interest. Plus, we offer the best in personal attention. Out in the Garden Nursery, where we grow great gardens one plant at a time. Subaru Garden Days returns to Capital Subaru in Salem. Join us for a day of food, fun, and garden excitement. Select garden vendors join William and Judy on the parkway from 11 to 3. At Subaru Garden Days, June 2nd at Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. Since 1987, French Prairie Gardens has brought you the best in farm fresh produce, beautiful plants, and memorable family events. 
Spring is here and now is the time to get your garden ready with our wide selection of bedding plants and hanging baskets. Experience the best the country has to offer at French Prairie Gardens. The health and beauty of your garden starts from the ground up and healthy soils begin at Grimm's Fuel. For the best in garden mulch, blended soils and bark dust, choose Grimm's. U-Haul delivered or installed, Grimm's can do it. And if you're looking for a new lawn, Grimm's can do that too with our special lawn installation service. Grimm's is also the area's largest recycler of yard debris. The foundation for a healthy garden begins at Grimm's Fuel. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. So I am standing out in the yard of Grimm's Fuels and I'm here with Jeff. And Jeff, um, you know, for a long time now, we at Garden Time have, have really come to you for, for things on bark dust and compost because you have such a great product. And so we were delighted uh, to find out that you're making some big changes here to make your composts even become a better product. Can you tell me what that is? We are, we've just begun a uh, retrofit of our facility. For, since 1980, we've been a static pile composting facility where people bring their yard debris in, they grind it up, and we put it in large stockpiles where it sits there and decomposes and composts for four to six months. And so the, just, just for people like me that are pretty simple, static just means it literally, it's not getting turned, it's not getting moved, it literally just does what nature does and decomposes, right? Basically, okay. yes. We do turn it a couple times in there, but basically you're correct. It just sits there in the pile, and then after you know four or six months, we bring it back over, we screen it out, and we bring you the compost that you're used to. So the retrofit, we we want to have better process control. And in the static pile system, you can't you know you can't control the air, the moisture, and the temperature of the pile. Right. And so it makes it hard to keep the bugs happy, the guys that are doing all the hard, heavy lifting and the hard work when it comes to making compost. So we are putting in what they call an aerated static pile compost or composting system. Right. In that system, we'll put the compost on the air, the pipes that you see behind us, and we will either blow air up through the compost or pull air down through the compost, depending on how, to, you know, what the bugs need to stay happy. And so the piles will be much smaller, they'll be 14 feet high, and we will water when we put them into the beds. We will leave them in the beds for uh, 15 days. Well, the, the temperatures and air will constantly be monitored via computer systems. Then after 15 days, we'll flip them into another cell of the aerated system where they will sit for another 15 days. Well, because, you know, this really is, and I think, I think that a lot of times I want to know that I know something, and I believe that I do, but the, the reality is when, when the earth itself makes compost, it isn't just throwing stuff in a pile and letting it rot. There's a whole system of insects, of air, of water, that all makes a difference on how fast you actually even get the compost. That's so that's correct, what yeah. this whole system really is paying attention to now. It's all about keeping the bugs happy. Right. <laughs> to speed up the process and keep the bugs happy with the right oxygen, moisture, and temperature. And if you do those things, you'll produce compost with much less odor and you'll get a better finished product. Because the very nature of decomposition is fragrance. I mean, there's, there's a smell there, but this system will not only make the compost itself better, it'll also help with that, that fragrance that happens naturally from the process. That's correct. The bugs will be anaerobic as opposed to, uh, not on a, anaerobic is what we have in the existing pile. Right. In places at times. This will be all aerated, the compost, and the bugs will be very happy because we're going to put so much oxygen into the piles. Well, and, and when, do you, when do you perceive that this whole, when do you think this process will actually start? Because you've started a bit of it already in one portion here. Yep, we've done a lot of work so far. A lot of it's underground so that we can't see it. But uh, we're hoping to be done by August with the first phase of right. this system. Well, actually, the first phase is in the bins uh, behind us. 
where we actually have some test bins going on. And we're producing about 10% of our volume is going through those systems right now. Once this phase that is behind us is completed, we'll be almost all, you know, the majority of our facility will be under right. air. So Jeff, you've always had a great compost product and now it's even going to get better. So, and this is the time of year too, that we're really using compost for especially our edible gardens and even our perennials and stuff. So do I just give you a call? How do I get a hold of you guys? Yep, you can give us a call at 503-636-3623 or on the web, Grimm's Fuel Company. We have, you can come out with your pickup and haul it yourself. We can deliver it in a dump truck and uh, you can wheel it around with your wheelbarrow or we can install it with our blower trucks. Well, there you have it. So whichever way you want to get your compost, there are every way you need to to come out and get it. So just give them a call. Go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website even. Come out and get some compost for your own garden. Thank you so Thank much, Thank you so much Jeff. for stopping by. Stop and smell a rose. Hear a child laugh. See the beauty that is Oregon. You will find all this and more at the Oregon Garden in historic Silverton. 400-year-old oaks, edible landscapes, a children's garden. Spend a day leisurely strolling the garden or attend one of many garden events or classes. You can even extend your stay with a night at the Oregon Garden Resort. Enjoy the garden that showcases the diverse botanical beauty of our state, the Oregon Garden. Come to where the color is, come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. Summer heat is coming. Make yourself an oasis in the shade. Come see our big selection of begonias, fuchsias, coleus, and other cool plants. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle. Develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar-powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. Why do the finest builders shop at Standard TV and Appliance? It's pretty easy to put Standard in their shoulder to shoulder with us. They are awesome when it comes to service. The products are really incredible that they carry. We really enjoy the interaction with all of the staff from the sales to the delivery. They really stand behind what they sell. Standard can make your dream kitchen a reality. Setting the standard since 1947. Standard TV and Appliance. Hey everybody, I'm Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden and today we're at Bauman Cidery and I'm with my cousin Christine who has taken a family tradition and she's making it her own. You know what, for all my life we have grown and pressed apples and it was about time we started fermenting them. Absolutely. Not only do we take the apples, but we also take some of the fruit we grow on the farm and we mix them all together. So let's give you a behind the scenes peek on how we make that happen. Let's go grab some fruit. All right. All right, Christine, so we got some berries from the farm, but we need some apple juice first. How does that all work? Where do we start? Well, we press the apples next door. Okay. We put it in the tank with some yeast, and it just ferments away. How long does that take? Between a week and three. Sweet, that's fast. Okay, so we have like a base cider, right? Yep. Now we've got some Bowman fruit. What do we got? Well, we've got some Logan berries. Oh, Logan berries, one of my personal favorites. Uh, it's crossed between a red raspberry and a blackberry, right? That's right. And we grow them here on Bowman Farms. Lucky for us. So what do we do next? Well, we add the berries to the tank. Awesome, let's go take a look. Oh my gosh, this tank is massive. How big is it? It's 60 barrels or 1,800 gallons. Okay, so we have this tank. We took the berries that we had and we put the berries in. We put the base cider over the top of it. That's right. And then what's next? So for a week, I pump it over every day so okay. that it really mixes up with the berries and pulls all the color and all the flavor from those Logan berries. Awesome, I can see it. So we got them all mixed up and then we're going to pull the juice off the top of the remaining Just berries. Just the juice, leave the berries behind. This is a little bit of a filtration system here. Okay, can I try some now? 
Uh, I would wait. We tend to sweeten it with a little bit of fresh apple juice, and you're going to like that a lot better. All right, so no artificial sweeteners, sugars, anything just like that. It's berries just and apples. Sweet. Okay, I really want to go try some. Let's do it. All right. Oh my gosh, my job is so much better on the farm now that I get to try cider. What are the two varieties we have here? Today I poured for us Loganberry and okay. our Clyde Stry Heritage Cider. And Clyde is actually our grandfather, the namesake yes. of this. And what makes it so special? So I make the Clyde Stry out of apples that Grandpa Clyde would have planted on the farm, the apples that we grew up working in the orchards. That is so cool. If you want to try these ciders at your favorite local bar, make sure you ask for it if they don't have it on tap. I'm sure they can get it and we could use all the help in getting the word out. And Christine is always trying some new, unusual things. We have those on tap down here at the farm all the time. Come on down and check it out sometime. For more information, go to baumanscider.com over to baumansfarmandgarden.com. Let's try some cider. Cheers. Cheers. Well, it is a great joy for me to be here with Kim at Pacific Hot Tub Solutions. And Kim, you know, I, I love the concept of a spa. And then once people go, okay, I'm gonna commit to it, I'm gonna do this. Can you go over the things that really we need to think about, like location, electricity, water supplies? Tell me about that kind of stuff that we should think about. Sure, William. So any hot tub you're gonna wanna put on a flat level surface, it needs to have a really solid base so that it doesn't um, obviously have your water level be crooked, but right. also to um, for the stability of the spa, just so it doesn't warp over time. So you wanna make sure you have a flat level surface that that sits on. And that probably means you don't wanna just go out and put some gravel down correct somewhere just to get it okay right you need to build a deck or put it on a concrete slab or a patio of some type as something that's going to be stable and stay right. put and then you're going to need to determine your electrical source so you need to either have 110 or 220 we have different models available so a smaller tub two to three person less jets smaller pump size can just plug in a natural uh, a normal plug-in right. on the outside of your house 20 amp circuit, or if you want something bigger that's going to seat five to six people, have multiple pumps, lots of jets, then you're going to need to put in, make sure you have 220 available. So Kim, as a gardener, where would I place this in my garden? What would I have to consider? Right. So you're going to want to place it someplace where it has um, easy access. So you do have a, a panel that you have to be able to get into to maintain it. So you wouldn't want to put it right up against a deck or a bed that you would want some not want somebody walking in. Mm -hmm. You would want to make sure that you do have access for that. But other than that, it really you can put it wherever you want. It's got uh, hot tubs nowadays all have composite siding, not the wood. So it's going to sit out in your elements just fine. If you did have a big tree that dropped a lot of needles, you might want to consider not being right under that. Most of the time when you're not using it, it's going to be covered, so needles aren't going to get in there. But when you're using it, if there happened to be a windstorm, needles are going to fall in there. Right. So you might want to take that into consideration um, or just be really attentive to that and get those out before you shut it down for the night. Perfect. So, yeah. Correct. And then too, you know, now there's, there used to be, you know, like one, one pump in a spa, but that's changed for many reasons. So you might need the higher one, the higher power for that. Right. A lot of times older spas, you're going to see one pump, very minimal jets, more of just a soaking um, environment. Nowadays, especially with tubs like this, you've got 80-some jets, you've got four pumps, you've wow. got really good therapy. You can kind of customize your soak to what your specific needs are. So upper back, lower back, seated positions, lay down positions. So you're really then able to now with spas, just but not, with, they used to just be, oh, they make you comfortable. This really is almost like a therapeutic system to specifically spot check areas that need attention. Exactly. Wonderful. Yeah, um, hot tubbing has kind of gone from the party, right. fun, luxury to really a necessity right. for many, many people. And we've learned over the years that hydrotherapy really is good for you on many levels. Well, and this is from Clearwater Spas, right? Correct. And they also really concentrate on, on the water and the, the, the way it is used and the, whether you're using chemicals or stuff like that. Tell me about that quickly. So historically with hot tubs, you have to put in uh, some type of sanitation, whether right. it's chlorine or bromine. Uh, there's been a lot of talk in the last 10 years about salt systems or bromine generators. 
Um, salt systems are extremely corrosive to mm -hmm. hot tubs, and so they really shorten the life of your metal components, which is your pumps and right, your heaters, right. those things. So Clearwater Spas has come out with a virtually chemical-free system. Really? Yeah. So a lot of people don't want to take in those chemicals dermally. They want to be sitting in crystal clean water um, and not having to worry bacteria, but they don't want to take in those, those chemicals. Right. And so this is a uh, system that is virtually chemical-free. You balance your water initially the first time, and then it's ions that are generated that... Um, kill the bacteria. Okay. You also then have a magnetic field that stabilizes your water. And then you have UV and ozone, which are in most tubs that again help kill the bacteria. So you've got multi-levels of systems going on in there that are killing that bacteria for you. This tub has been running for about four months here in our shop. We've had people come in, we offer wet testing to people if they want to come in and check out a spa. Uh -huh. We've had people in this spa um, and we've put no chemicals in there whatsoever. So people that have owned tubs know that if you had a tub for four months and didn't do anything to it, it would not look like it, that. It would be more green probably. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I love all that information, but there's also, I want to go to another place in the showroom and see the, these, I call them giant because they're so big you can actually swim in. So let's walk over there and chat okay, about those, perfect. okay? All right, Kim. <laughs> this, it looks like an actual, like a mini swimming pool. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. So these are swim spas. These come anywhere from 13 feet to 19 feet. The 19 feet model actually has um, a swim spa and a hot tub in a separate component. So you have both built into one. They have swim jets that push out about 900 gallons a minute, depending wow. on the different size of the tub. And some models are just low speed and high speed, kind of for the more um, basic swimmer, teach your kids to swim, that kind of thing. And then some actually have six different speeds that is for the Olympian swimmer. Right, so right. you can do your full workout. It'll start out on a low level. It'll go all the way up to high, and then it actually automatically will cool you back down. So it adjusts the speeds automatically. And it seems logical to me that there's many reasons, like if you don't want the cost and expense of a grand swimming pool, but you still love to swim, or even if you have a small space, these are the things that really could answer that question. Right, yeah. and so many of your viewers probably already have well-established yards, yeah. lots of landscaping, and they don't want to destroy that by big, digging a big hole in right. there and putting in a, in a swimming pool. So this, we can just crane over your side yard, over the house if we need to, put it in the backyard, and you've got a nice compact footprint, wow. Wow. but still getting that, um, that swim environment in your backyard. Well, you know, I can only speak as a gardener because that's what I do for a living, but I can tell you that Everybody generally wants to be healthy and we want to relax and feel better in our lives. So this is a great idea on the whole level of what you can do to make your life better. So for more information, as always, we'll kick you over to their website. Come out, contact them, look at their showroom, experience things, and really decide which one you want to get for your own garden. Kim, thank you so much. Thanks, William. William and I want to thank you for watching today, and we hope to see you later this afternoon at the Inviting Vines Tour. We also wanted to remind you that in two weeks, on June 8th, Garden Time will air at 7 a.m. in the Portland area because of the Rose Festival Parade. So for more information about that or any events going on in our area, please go to gardentime.tv. Judy and I so enjoyed spending time with you today, so why don't we do it again next week right here on Garden Time. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.